Hey, this is John White. Hey, what is the real line pull of that vibro that you're using? Well, watch this video and maybe with uh, some close observations, you can figure that out on your own. So we're about to test these uh, Everpat elastomers. We purchased them from Ice Seattle just to make sure that we had the right elastomer. You see how it says on the, on the side of it, Everpads. Everpads is an elastomer manufacturer from Taiwan. Everpads does not publish the spring rate of their elastomers, so the only way to figure it out is to actually do this kind of a test. Okay, so we're about ready to test these two elastomers. They're in place on a special test stand that we've made. The cylinder is 5.13 inches in diameter. The formula we are using to calculate the cylinder force blind side is to take the square inches, times it by the pressure, which equals the force in pounds. To find out the total area, we square the inches in diameter, multiply it by pi, and then divide by four. So the test cylinder that we are using has 20.66 square inches of area. We will be testing two elastomers in the exact same configuration that it would be on the vibratory hammer. So whatever force we come up with, we'll have to divide by two to show what each elastomer represents. So let's go ahead and stretch it one inch. It's at 14 now, we're gonna to go to 15. Okay, so now the elastomers are stretched one inch. The pressure on the gauge is 100 PSI. So now that we know the pressure, we can take the square inches of 20.66 times 100 PSI equals 2,066 pounds. Because we're testing two elastomers, we have to divide by two to figure out what each elastomer's spring rate is. So if you take the total 2,066 and divide it by two, each elastomer has 1,033 pounds of spring rate per inch. Now let's pull another inch to see what we get. The elastomer supplier is saying that the force of these things is linear, meaning if you've got 1,033 pounds per one inch, you can go another inch and it would equal double that. So let's just see, in fact, if these uh, elastomers the spring rate is linear. So let's go another inch. Okay, so we're now at two inches. We should be if it's okay. So what we have is 200 pounds. So yes, that's correct. It's linear. Now let's go up to three inches. A little more, a little more. Okay, so now we're at three inches. And we are 300 PSI. So indeed, these elastomers are linear. Let's just take it up uh, to uh, another couple inches. Keep going. Okay, so now we've stretched this a total of uh, one, two, three, four inches, five inches. Five inches, you can see that these elastomers are stretched a long way, right? Five inches. Five inches equals 500 pounds. So indeed, these are linear. Okay, I'm standing right now in front of the 77C ice hammer. It's got a suppressor housing that is pretty much the same as the 44. There are 12 elastomers on each side, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 on each side, that's 24. And they're using the Everpads elastomer. Okay, let's just do some simple math. The 77 that I just showed you has 24 elastomers. We know that each elastomer is about 1,033 pounds per inch. So let's just take our calculator 
24 times 1033, that's, that's 24,792 pounds that you would be getting per inch, right? So you divide that by two to get the tons. So that's 12.396 tons per inch. So now as a pile buck, you're totally armed with being able to figure out exactly how much line pull your hammer has. Just go out there with your tape measure and measure how many inches of travel that ice presser has before it hits the stops. And then you'll know the actual tons. And I challenge you to do so. The reason that I challenge you to do so is because you got to count the elastomers. Some machines have all 24 elastomers in them and some do not. In fact, most of them do not. So you can't rely on the literature and what it says your line pull is. You got to rely on counting the elastomers, knowing the spring rate, and then measuring how far the distance is between the stops. Some of these newer uh, machines have a rubber bumper in the stop area, which limits the stroke. So instead of moving nine inches like the old earlier ones, you're maxed out at five or six inches. So uh, you just do the math yourself. Thank you for watching this video. Hey, I've been around since 1977, but I would be the last one to say that I know everything. Uh, hey, if you've got an idea or if you think I'm wrong about something, please feel free to email me at forestledge at gmail.com. By the way, here's what I was doing in January of 1990. So ask yourself, where were you in the pile driving world in January 1990?